My hand's in it. Let's go up to three. Woo! Lots of sparks. What's up everyone, it's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. You guys saw the title and the intro. Today we're talking cold sparks. You guys have seen in the gig logs, I've been using cold sparks now for quite a few years and I've been hesitant to make this video because there's a lot of stuff that comes with cold sparks that we're gonna get into when it comes to regulations, how to safely do it. Also, we've been struggling with finding the correct machines that work and don't get clogged and don't have issues, but we have finally got there. We now have the exact machines that we like and we use all the time. So let's talk about how we're gonna talk in this video. So first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the background on cold sparks, some things you need to know from the legality, permitting perspective, things you might need. We're gonna talk all those details first. Then I'm gonna talk about these specific cold sparks right here, which is, this is the fourth generation cold spark from both lighting. And while talking about these cold sparks, I'll also talk about the previous generations and some of the problems that have happened. And it's also why I've waited so long to finally film a video. Also gonna talk about name brand versus Chinese brand and everything you need to know around that. We're gonna show a demo of these and we're gonna talk about the specific powder you guys need, how much this all costs and everything in a final conclusion. So to kick it off, let's talk about all the fun of legality with cold sparks. So let me start off with a disclaimer on this portion of the video. I am in no means a legal expert on everything related to cold sparks. Also, the restrictions and everything involved with them is different in every single state and every country. So depending on where you are at, this may or may not apply to you. I am not a legal advice guide of any sort, but I'm gonna give you my background and what I know about these cold sparks. Take that info and go ask people in your area as to what is the actual restrictions. So to understand why these restrictions exist, let's talk about exactly how a cold spark machine works. And the best way to show you how it works is to take it apart and actually show you the internal. This right here is the inside of the cold spark machine. I removed the front and top plates of it to show you the inner workings and explain how it works better for you guys. It all starts at the top here with the hopper. This is where you put the powder in. The powder looks like this right here. It's a metal powder. It's made up of mostly titanium and zirconium, which is what produces that spark effect. And you buy this powder in pre-packaged bags. They're vacuum sealed. There's two different types, an indoor and an outdoor. And we'll talk more specifically about the powder and its safety factors and all that later as well. But this is where you load the hopper full of the powder. Now there is a motorized chute right here that goes from the hopper into the actual heated chamber. So there's a little screw wheel that activates. You can see it right there. There's the motor that turns the screw wheel that pushes the powder into the heated chamber. There is an electric coil that heats around the chamber. Then there is another screw wheel right here. Actually, I can turn it manually on the side here, but there's this motor right here that turns another screw wheel inside of the heated chamber that pushes the now heated powder into the chute. And the chute has this big fan on the bottom right here. If we take this off, we can probably see the fan inside of there. And that fan then blows the heated powder out the chute and then the reaction of the heated powder hitting the air causes the spark effect. It is 100% a chemical effect, not an actual like flame or fire effect. So from a safety standpoint, what we need to be concerned about is the electric heated section right here. So we got an electric coil in there that's heating up to a pretty high temperature. Specifically, the heated chamber is actually getting up to around 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is incredibly hot on the inside which is why the whole thing is insulated around every bit that could be heated inside. And then there's also a gap between the metal walls and the insulation and the heated chamber. And there's an exhaust fan on the back that's constantly pushing air out to keep nice cool air flowing through here to prevent overheating. So overall, the cold spark machine is a very well engineered piece of equipment to produce the cold spark effect. Now, the biggest concern that everyone has, and this is why I really want to go into more detail on this to start with, so you guys understand the background of cold sparks, understand a lot of the things that you're going to have to 
know about when it comes to getting these and then getting them approved to be used at different venues, different situations, and everything related to it. Because the more you guys are an expert on cold sparks, the better off you're gonna be with being able to get this effect, get it approved, and be able to use it at events and you know make money because this effect is in high demand. The biggest concern though with cold sparks, of course, is fire. It's a spark effect, but it is cold. We've already talked about this, it's a cold effect. The actual effect itself up here when it's sparking is only at 62 degrees. It's extremely safe. The actual spark effect is a chemical reaction between the air and the heated spark powder itself, then the friction involved creates that spark effect. So we're safe when it comes to the actual spark shooting off. But like I said, the heated element in here is the area of concern. And in all of my research and testing, the only way that this has actually happened to cause fire in any way, shape, or form is from not following directions stated by the manufacturers and by not, well, same thing, not maintaining it properly, following the directions of the manufacturers. So the two things you need to consider are the clean out function on the actual device and cleaning the machine properly. We'll get into more details on that, but basically you don't wanna use this thing, shut it off, and then go use it again, shut it off, use, shut it off. There's an actual clean out process you need to do at every single event to make sure it's in good working order. Otherwise, it can clog up and sparks won't come out, and if you let it get really bad, you have the potential for this to overheat, uh, I would say that was more a problem in the older models that didn't have good ventilation. A lot of the older models didn't actually have an exhaust fan on them. So all that nowadays in the newer models is not a concern. The concern is actual stuff getting into the machine and getting up near this really hot barrel that heats the powder. And as you can imagine, anything that's close to the actual sides of the machine has the potential to get sucked in to the actual machine and be basically exposed to that heated barrel. Now, on both sides of the machine, there are these perfect grates that basically are perforated foam that keep out pretty much anything possible from getting into the machine, they're filters. But that's also why in the actual manufacturing directions, it states that you need to keep at least three feet of clearance on all four sides of the machine. You don't want anything up near it if possible. Now, I can't film this video without debunking some videos you might have seen online of cold sparks causing fires. I will first tell you that any video you watch where the sparks hitting something starts a fire, that is not a cold spark machine. Those are spark machines. From the non-educated eye, they look very similar, but they are completely different. There's actually a pyrotechnic spark machine that's basically a firework machine that shoots basically molten sparks into the air. Those have been around for years, They hundreds of years. I mean, they, you see them in fireworks shows all the time, potentially. Those are real spark machines. Cold spark machines are relatively new to the mass majority of Americans out there. So you need to know that there's a big difference. And also, if you ever see a video of a cold spark machine versus a spark machine, the sparks are distinctly different as well. And I'll try to grab some footage to throw in here to show you guys the difference, but you can tell the difference. Now, the other types of fires that you'll see, and these are very rare, I had to research a lot to find these, are related to what I just said. And it's where basically someone has the like that pompous grass stuff, the, the boho, kind of stuff that's kind of popular right now. They'll have their cold spark machine like right up in it, almost hitting the pompous grass. Like it has the potential to easily get sucked up in and cause a fire. So you want to keep distance from anything possible that could get brought up into it and cause a fire. It's very self-explanatory stuff, but that is what I've seen in terms of cases of fires happening with a cold spark machine. Jump shifts and talk a little bit about the restrictions related to the safety factors that you will encounter with these. Now, this is completely different in all different states, all different areas of the world, and there's even differences in venues' opinions on these as well that you're gonna encounter. First things foremost is actually getting these approved to use where you live. Now, every state is different, like I said. Some states, you take them down to the fire marshal, they'll approve them for use, good to go. Some states, you need pyrotechnic license. You actually gotta go get a pyrotechnic license. It costs some money, you gotta do some courses to get a pyrotechnic license to be able to operate these. Now, depending on your state, do some research, figure out which one it is. 
When it comes to the fire marshal, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna call up the nearest firehouse to you, ask to speak with fire marshal, and basically to ask them to see the cold spark machines you have to get them approved for basically use. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up a time, go down there, you're gonna set up your cold sparks probably outside so that they can see them. You're gonna shoot off the effects so that they can watch it. They're gonna make sure it's all safe, all good to go, check the operations, all that, and then what they're gonna do is they're actually gonna flip it over. Because that's one of the biggest safety protocols when it comes to cold sparks, is that when you flip this over, it needs to shut off. So again, you gotta check with what cold sparks you have. I'll talk about these ones specifically, but there's actually a switch here in the bottom that basically can tell if this thing is flat or flipped. And as soon as it's flipped, it cuts all power to the machine. And when you speak to the fire marshal, they may or may not be familiar with cold sparks. There's been a lot of bulletins posted on government and state websites around cold spark machines to educate basically all the fire people that are out there related to them. So it necessarily should not be a stressful situation. You're pretty much just gonna have a general conversation with them, educate them. Again, they're not there to be like the stickler people of yes and no. They have to go by the guidelines that are in your county, in your city, in your state, and they're gonna educate you on those guidelines, everything you need to know around those, and overall, they're just trying to make sure that you're safe and following the law according to where you live. Now, if you jump through all those hoops, get it approved with the fire marshal, get uh, permits if you need to or not, you still may or may not be able to use these at every single venue. A lot of venues have their own restrictions around using cold spark machines, um, whether that's from a standpoint of them just not knowing about them and they're just like, no, no sparks because they don't want flames. Sometimes you gotta educate venues and I've done plenty of education in my area. I feel like I'm one of the pioneers in our area trying to get cold sparks up and running over the last three to four years and I've had to take these machines to venues, show them, show all the details of how they work. We're gonna go into that where you can put your hand on them everything related to that, how it's not flammable. I've had to do that to get them approved for certain venues. And one of the things that is the hardest to work around is the powder. And we will show this in the video. I've shown it at certain venues before. It's why we bring a Dyson to all of our events. But these cold spark machines, this powder that shoots off comes back down. It does not just dissipate into nothing there is leftover powder on the ground afterwards. Now that powder, if it gets on people's shoes, could potentially scuff the floor of the venue if they have very sensitive floors. So a workaround to that is to have a big piece of carpet and run those underneath the machines to minimize the powder going everywhere. It's gonna be fun to try and work around that with the venue, but that is something you can actually go through to try and get them approved at a certain venue if they're concerned about the powder itself. Also telling them that you're gonna sweep up afterwards is also critical. And I skipped over this, but the other thing that you are gonna need when you do cold sparks is a class D fire extinguisher. This is the yellow fire extinguisher. I'll put a link in the description down below where you guys can get one. They're like $800, they are not cheap. But these are meant to put out chemical fires. Now, don't ask me why, in, in my research into how this effect works, unless you buy bad powder, I don't see why these machines would actually have a true chemical fire. All I see is the potential for an actual fire. But, don't tell me why, but in the fire code, and I mean, they do more research than I do, they require that you have a Class D fire extinguisher on hand at all your events. Now, I don't have ours with me to show you because my I, one DJ took out four cold sparks this weekend and he, of course, took the fire extinguisher with him for safety protocol. Just know that that is also something you need to consider when you get cold sparks. You also need to get yourself a Class D fire extinguisher and go down to the fire marshal and get them to prove it and it'll expire after so many years and you have to get it recertified. It's a whole process. But just know that's another factor you have to consider when you get cold sparks. So now that I've got very technical with you guys and explained exactly how a cold spark effect works, talked a little bit about the restrictions, how you can get around the restrictions, things you need to consider with the cold spark machines, safety protocols, all that, let me tell you how we use them at Fusion Sound and Lighting, and then I will go through and talk about this specific cold spark, which is the Bowflighting 650 watt version four. 
Interrupting the video real quick because I want to let you know that we're doing a massive giveaway on BothLightingUSA.com. Yes, a massive giveaway. These right here are the Both Lighting Tubes, the brand new 360 tubes. They're amazing. We're giving away a complete four pack of them and anybody can enter to win. Just click the link down below. You can sign up different ways. You can get multiple entries if you follow us on social media. Go check it out again. We're giving away a four pack of these right here and that giveaway is going to go all the way until August 4th. You basically can sign up. Anybody's eligible all across the world. There's no limitations. Anybody can enter to win. And we're going to be drawing the winner at the DJX convention. Yeah, that's right. Both Lighting USA is going to be at the DJX convention showing off all the amazing lights. And we'll be drawing the winner for the giveaway at the DJX convention. But wait, there's more. As part of the giveaway, if you guys submit a picture of your best DJ setup with both lighting. So if you've got both lighting lights already, submit a picture of your best DJ setup. And we're gonna be handpicking the top 10 setups that we see submitted. And those top 10 people are gonna be eligible for the grand prize and everyone is gonna vote on who has the top setup. The winner of that grand prize is gonna be getting two of the both lighting wash moving heads in either white or black of your choosing. So check the link down below, get yourself signed up for the giveaway to win for these tubes and submit your photos to be eligible for the grand prize of two wash moving heads. Back to the video. So here at Fusion Sound Lighting, I will be honest, the biggest issue we have is not with getting these approved from a legal standpoint, it's actually getting them approved to be used at individualized venues. So. I'm just going straight up to tell you guys that the hardest thing you're going to deal with when you get them is actual venues. So we have a whole process we go through whenever a client wants cold sparks. The first thing we do is we ask them to reach out to the venue and see if they will allow us to use cold sparks. Now we also tell them the couple, we give them a little snippet of text and basically it says my DJ would like to use cold sparks at the event. Cold sparks are not a pyrotechnic spark in any sense. It's actual cold effect that's cold to the touch. They burn at 62 degrees. And here is a quick video demonstration of them in use. And we send them both videos of us using them in venues and a video of someone basically holding their hand over it, holding a piece of paper and showing them how safe they are to use. And that is kind of the initial steps. After that, we reach out to the venue specifically to ask them if they have any questions related to it. And if they are very skeptical, which nowadays is actually getting a lot better, um, we're one of the pioneers in our area that's actually trying to push Cold Sparks out to all these venues. There's a couple other guys that are also doing it, so they're getting to be more prominent. And the more prominent that Cold Sparks are in your specific area, the better chance you're gonna be able to use Cold Sparks in your area. But early on, back in like 2019, 2020, we had to do a lot of work in our area where basically any couple that wanted to use cold sparks, normally nine times out of 10, I would have to specifically go out to that venue, bring the cold sparks, show them the cold sparks, show them shooting off, aggressively shoot them off, show them how safe they are before they would approve us to actually use them in their venue. I do wanna give you guys one last point though on venues because this is something that I've ran into and it's more related to venues than it is for actual like protocols. So the effect of the cold spark, we've already talked about it. It is basically a smokeless, airless, it's not pyrotechnic, it doesn't produce any smoke, but there is those particles of powder that it kind of shoots off that will fall down to the ground. If a venue has a very cheap fire system, it can set it off. Most venues are required to have better fire grade system or fire alarm, I'm talking about fire alarms here, than these. So what I'm talking about is in your house, you know those cheap like $10 fire alarms that you put up that they honestly get set off from the randomest things? Those nine times out of 10 are a particle detector, so they detect particles in the air. So if you're using these in an event, it produces particles, you actually can set off a fire alarm. Now, if you're in a any venue that is like state of the art, it's like publicly registered and all that, the fire system they're gonna have in there is not gonna see this on the system. Those systems are either laser or they're way higher quality and they can detect the difference between a smoke particle and a dust particle. That's basically what it is, it's a dust particle that clouds the sensor and can potentially trip it. But we all know the venues we work in sometimes are barns, they're random shacks that were built to be a venue and you can run into all different types of fire alarm systems out there and you have the potential to set them off if they are cheap. I'll tell you a quick story. I was at a venue that they had previously told me that someone brought in cold sparks and it set off the fire alarm. And I was like, eh, there, there ain't no way. I'm like, it's, it, it doesn't set off the fire alarm. And this is when I first learned about this. 
So I said, I would like to come out and see if they do that. So I brought mine out there. I thought maybe he used actual sparks, who knows? I brought him out there, I shot him off. They had a really nice fire alarm system with the panel and everything. I'm like, there's no way it's gonna set this off. I basically was on it, shooting him off, shooting him off. And then the fire alarm went off, but not the fire alarm. It was one of those little random ones, the cheap ones that you buy for your house. They had four of them in the ceiling and they were the combo. They were the fire alarm CO2 alarms. It wasn't the fire alarm system that got tripped. It was the little fire alarm CO2 combo. They bought those cheap ones to use for their CO2 alarm system. And I was like, what the fuck? Because it, it set off one of the four. And if you don't know anything about those cheap ones, one in 10 are bad. One in 10 don't work. Like look up the statistics. Those cheap fire alarms that you buy for your house are normally bad. Like a lot of them don't work properly and they fail to go off in actual fires. They're cheap. They're pieces of crap, to be honest. I don't understand why they allow them to sell them. And I'm like, it's, I, I even explained to him, like, that's not your fire alarm. That's your CO2 combo fire alarm. And that's not even the fire alarm announcement. So if you don't know about fire alarms and CO2s, there's a different like beeping pattern for a fire alarm versus a CO2 alert. And it was the fire alarm one going off and I was like explaining it to them and that's when I first learned about this. So fun little tangent story that if you are at a venue and you see those cheap little fire alarm detectors, try to put your cold spark farther away from it. Don't put, put it farther away from it. That's the best advice I got for you or ask the venue to shut it off, take it down. You may or may not also run into venues that re they request that a fire marshal is on site. In short, what I'm telling you is that you might run into some headaches with cold sparks, but I don't want that to deter you. Cold sparks are an amazing effect and all the headache that you go through is worth it because you need to charge accordingly for when you get to use it. So we charge upwards of $500 to bring two of these to a single event. Uh, I know in other areas they charge even more, but this effect, is a show-stopping effect, so I don't want that to deter you. It is well worth it if you can get these approved at a venue to use it because it is a wow factor. It is a hell of a sales factor to get people in the door, and it is an awesome effect. So with that said, I'm gonna put this together and we're gonna talk specifically about the both lighting 650 watt Gen 4 Cold Spark machine. So I opted to not put it all the way back together and just jump over to the other fully put together one. <laughs> so this is the both lighting 650 watt Cold Spark machine. It's got these awesome handles that fold down and up and they lock into position, which is really cool. So like if you tilt it over, the handle doesn't fall out, makes it easy to work with. We have the covers on both sides, the exhaust intakes, these do just pop off. And we have this cap right here, which is helpful for being able to manually turn. It's a little hard to do, but you can manually turn the inner chute that's in the heated section. And that helps with being able to try and remove clogs if you potentially get one. On top here, we have the chute and they did a good job labeling them. So that way you don't get confused because you do not want to put powder in here. That can cause problems, very bad problems. Don't put powder in here. Put powder where there's the powder into the hopper. So this is where the powder goes. Don't put powder here. There's actually on Amazon, you can buy like a little plug that goes in here when you go to put them in. And there's also a funnel that makes it a little bit easier. We don't actually use them because we bought them and then everyone lost them. So we just don't use them. On the back side here, some things to point out. Here's the exhaust fan. This is the antenna for the remote control. We'll show that in a bit. We have a series of lights here. We have ready, DMX, fault, and heat. And then we have the actual DMX screen here itself. So you can actually go through this, the functionality on it. We have all the information on the cold spark itself. It's 110 volts, 650 watts of consumption. It's a six amp unit. The fuses, here's all the certifications that you need to know about that it has. And this is the warning label and the serial number. So there's a lot more precautions involved in the cold spark machine, a lot more details on the back. We have power con in, power con out on off switch with the fuse down below and DMX in and DMX out. I don't want to overlook this on the specs real quick, but you might have just saw me say six amps. This thing uses six amps. In America, if you're not in America, we normally have 15 amp and 20 amp breakers. One of these cold sparks uses six amps by itself. Two of them can use 12 amps of power. These things are power hogs. Also, something you need to consider when you are doing an event, you normally cannot run your whole entire DJ rig and two cold sparks on the same 15 amp circuit. You might be able to get by on a 20 amp circuit, but I would highly not recommend it. So whenever you are using cold sparks, 
know that you need to have at least two circuits, if not three or four, depending on how many cold spark machines you are using. So the cold sparks, you can buy them individually by themselves, or you can buy them in these cool two unit road cases. And you will see that you have power, heat on and off, stop, clear, and then you got high one, high two, high three, speed, one through two. And these are some kind of cascade effects that you can do built into these without the need for DMXing. For the most part, we do not actually use the remote. We use the actual DMX in and out on this, unless we're doing an exit outside then we use the remote because there's no sense in going all the way outside and then also setting up a DMX thing. But when we're inside the reception, we normally use DMX. When we're outside, we use the remote. Let's go ahead and hook it up and let's shoot it off and show you all the awesome functionality of this. All right, so of course we got the power switch at the bottom. We're gonna turn it on. First thing it's actually gonna go to is actually the DMX address. You guys can't really see that, but it says 005. This machine will actually not start preheating until you actually turn it on and press the heat functionality. So on the remote, we're gonna press power at the top and now it says FHH, which basically means that we're on remote. F1F, we're already set to use our remote now. So again, we press power here at the top and now we're gonna need to turn the heat functionality on. So we're gonna press heat on and now the unit is heating up. You see the heat light turned on and this unit will now show the temperature as it grows all the way to 600 degrees roughly to get ready to heat. So I'll catch back up with you guys so you don't have to wait and we'll see how long it takes to heat up. And then when it's done heating up, it'll actually turn on as ready. So again, power on, turn heat on, and we're ready to go. I'll check back in when it's heated up. And now the unit is heated up, the heat turns off and it turns green. And we timed right around four minutes. That's all it took to heat up. It depends a lot on the ambient temperatures you're in. If you're in a hotter environment, it'll heat up faster. If you're in a colder environment, it'll take a little bit longer but I've seen as low as three minutes and as high as five minutes for these to actual heat up. And I will note that you'll see the heat light turn on and off as it tries to maintain that temperature. But now that it's ready, we can shoot some sparks. And uh, one step I forgot to mention, I actually filled it up with powder into the hopper before I started. And for most events, you don't need to fill the hopper all the way. Just about halfway full is normally good for my events to shoot it off about 15 to 20 times. But your mileage may vary. So to shoot the actual sparks, let's look at the remote. On the remote here, we have high one, two, and three. These are actually different height settings that you can shoot this off, which is a really cool feature of this generation of the both lighting cold sparks. Previous ones did not have this functionality, but we can hit one, two, or three. And then whenever we're ready to stop, we press the stop button. So let's go through the functionality real quick. All right, so this is high one. You'll see it's the lowest one. Not shooting that high at all. We'll hit stop. This is number two. A little bit higher, we're now hitting the ceiling. This is an eight foot ceiling, but I do have the cold spark about a foot off the ground. So let me actually take it down for a sec. Let's go back high two. And we are still hitting the ceiling. So that's probably around, from what I've seen, number two is hitting anywhere from eight to 10 feet in height. Number one is around that six to seven foot. Some of them are getting up there close to eight foot, but for the most part, six to seven foot. And then high three, this bad boy will get up there in the 12, 12 to 13 to 14 feet range and is very cool to use at events when you have really tall ceilings. So you've all seen the demo before when people put their hand in it, so I'm gonna do it too. My hand's in it. Let's go up to three. Woo! Lots of sparks. They are safe to the touch, but they do leave some dots on your hand. So that was me just sticking my hand in there for a long time. There's a lot of them, but these do just wash off very quickly. But you want to be mindful of that depending on what you're putting these on. You definitely don't want them hitting a white ceiling. They could leave little specks of brownish black on the ceiling. Now, again, that is not a burning effect of any sort. That is just kind of some residue that's left from the actual effect. It's just something you need to be mindful of. So that right there, just something to keep in mind when you're using these cold sparks. You don't want them hitting the ceiling. That's why this generation with having the three different heights is very helpful. So you can set that height correctly. Again, we use these all the time at lots of venues. 
it's never been a concern for us. We always demonstrate that you can stick your hand in it. And um, if you just stick it in there for a second, you won't have nearly as many dots as I do. I'm like holding my hand in there. But everyone loves the fact that you can stick their hand in them. They're safe to the touch. One thing I will mention on safety when firing these things while I'm doing the demonstration is whoever is operating the cold sparks needs to be mindful of who is around them when they fire them. You can imagine this thing is shooting dust, so you don't want a little kid looking right down in these things when they fire off. So there are set or unsaid safety precautions that you need to take and keep into mind. So if you're operating the cold sparks before you fire them, look and see to make sure no one is around them. If there is someone around them, go over them, ask them to move so that you don't shoot cold sparks in their face or up their arm or beside them. People will be startled by that effect, especially if you haven't fired them off yet. So make sure people stay clear from them. This is why it's great to have an assistant at your events. They can be the spotter, making sure people are staying away from them. Again, safety protocol in the description of these things is that you want to keep three feet all around them at all times clear so that basically nothing gets sucked up in them, but also from a safety perspective of these are shooting basically dust particles into the air and you don't want someone's eyes being affected by that. Unsaid safety precautions. I hope that's self-explanatory. Let's continue. And that's pretty much how simple it is to use the remote on these cold sparks. One thing to note, this is not an IR remote at all. This is an RF remote, so I do not have to point I'll mention, I'm breathing it in a little bit right now. This thing pr puts off quite a bit of dust. And if you're in a small garage like this, I would not recommend it unless you're trying to do some demonstrations like I am because there is a lot of lingering dust right now in the air from just this one cold spark. Why they're normally meant to be used in a bigger room environment. The last thing we need to get to on the remote is this button CLE. That is the clear functionality of it where we're gonna clear out the powder. And I'll talk about that and how you need to do that properly for proper cleaning and maintenance based on the manufacturer directions in a second. I want to show you quickly though the safety protocol basically that when you tip this over it goes into fault mode and then how to put it back from that. So like we mentioned one of the biggest safety protocols of the cold sparks is that when you tip it over it's not supposed to fire. So if I tip this over right now give it a couple seconds and then fault kicks in and this shuts down everything. It'll actually still stay on, but the heating functionality and the firing functionality are no more. Even if I put this back up level, it's not gonna go back into normal mode. So what I need to do now is to turn it off, turn it back on, grab my remote. I need to press power again. Then I need to press heat on again. And now I gotta wait for it to heat back up and then we'll be ready to fire. And we already have a green light because uh, we didn't shut it off that long. So it is already ready to go and to fire again. Beautiful. All right, so I'm down here with the cold spark. I wanna show you guys the powder residue that this leaves, cause I literally shot this off four times. There's a bunch of powder on the ground from this. But I wanna talk about the clear out function and then I wanna talk a little bit about the evolution of the generations of cold sparks from both lighting and the problems we've seen along the ways to get to the fourth generation now and some more details after that as well, but the clear out functionality. So manufacturer's directions are one thing and then I have what we do and it's a little bit different. So. Let's start with what is the most proper way to handle clearing out your cold spark machines after your event. First thing you need to do while it's on, it's on, running everything, we're all heated up, all that good stuff, is to shut it off, believe it or not. What you wanna do is shut it off, then you want to open where the powder goes and you wanna flip it over and empty out all the powder. Empty out the hopper completely and you're gonna want like a tubware container or something to empty it out into and that way you can reuse that powder at your next events, any of the leftover powder. Then you're gonna turn it back on, click power, click heat to get it back on, ready to fire and then you're gonna to wanna to hit the CLE clear out mode button, which I'll do right now. And what this is going to do is it's going to keep firing and firing until all of the powder is gone from the heated chamber. And this goes on for 30 seconds, so I'll cut back in in a second. 30 seconds later, the clean out function is over. The manufacturer's directions again is to empty out all the powder from the hopper, then to turn it back on and run the clear out function. And what it's doing is basically it wants to, we want to remove all the powder from the system because we don't want any of the powder to potentially gum up and clog the machine. So like I mentioned, we do something a little bit different against what the manufacturer recommends. And we're only able to do it now that we have this fourth generation that has better clear 
clear out functionality. We actually leave the powder in the hopper when we're in busy season. So when we're in busy season, we're taking out these cold sparks literally every weekend, maybe every other weekend. But normally in the winter time, in the summer, is when we'll actually dump the powder out because we're not using them as consistently and we don't want the powder to gum up inside of the hopper. But we normally only run the clear out function. And what the clear out function does, it doesn't move the powder from the hopper. If you can imagine the way the cold spark works is the, the, it has to feed powder from the hopper into the heated chamber and then the heated chamber pushes the powder through the chamber to the fan. When you run the clean out function, the only thing it is doing is pushing powder, pushing anything out of the actual heated chamber. So anything that's in the heated chamber, that's what it's pushing out. So anything that's left over. And it does that for 30 seconds and that clears it out great. So again, that's the directions for clearing it out. For the most part, I would just 100% make sure at every event when you're done, you hit the clear out function. If you wanna dump out the powder from the hopper, I would recommend that because that's the manufacturer's directions and if you don't do that, you void the warranty. But if you need to leave the powder in the hopper, I will tell you that we do it all the time and it hasn't caused an issue in the last two years of using this generation. I wanna talk a little bit about both lighting and the actual unit we're using here and the generations prior and the issues we had in those generations that have now been addressed in the new model. Oh, but first, here's all that powder that's all the powder from just one fire quite a bit of leftover dust powder from that unit which is why i mentioned we actually bought a dyson like nice vacuum specifically to take with us to all of our cold spark events to clean up after ourselves before we had that we just brought a broom and a dustpan or we borrowed the one from the venue to clean up after the fact highly recommend especially if you want to be on a good statue with using these at venues is to clean up after yourself. These produce a lot of dust and everything, clean up after yourself, use a vacuum, use a broom, dustpan, make it look nice again. Both lighting Gen 4 650 watt cold spark. They also have a more wattage version as well. I don't know why you need it, it's more expensive. It produces the same effect, just it can go even bigger when it comes to how high it's shooting. There's also a spinning version of this. Joe Bunn is probably dropping a video on it before I do, but there is a spinning cold spark unit that shoots two of these. It is a monster, and I mean that in literal sense. It's like the size of four of these put together. It's massive, it spins, it shoots two spark. It's a whole nother monster. We'll eventually get to it on the channel. It's quite expensive too, so that's future. Back to this, this is Gen 4. Any of you guys that have bought both lighting cold sparks over the years, there are different models that have come out. The first generation that came out was honestly the best one before this one that just now came out. We actually have four of them. We always run into problems though with clogs. Those machines, they clog out all, all the time and the problem is the clear out function doesn't run long enough, which has been addressed on the newer models. The clear out function on that runs for like 10 seconds if that and it normally we we have to practically once a year take it completely apart pull it apart and clean out the whole entire thing it's a it's a nightmare so we try not to use them nowadays but if you just saw in my last gig log i actually had two of the first gens and two of the fourth gens that we utilize. So if you guys have bought cold sparks at any point in time this is kind of how you're able to tell it those ones have like a radio antenna like with a big long thing for a remote and they are a little bit smaller than the newer ones because they didn't have an exhaust fan that blew out any of the heat inside the unit. So those ones definitely, it, it speaks to it. It's a first generation unit. The sparks don't shoot as high either. The fan wasn't as powerful, variety of things like that. They came out with the second generation. The second generation was the first time they went to this form factor. The remote was completely different. There was like a dongle that you had to attach to the remote. After the first generation, we went to this form factor, a bigger cold spark machine with the handles and everything. And it had a nice longer clean out session as well. The only difference is that the, uh, the second generation and the third generation, they had like a dongle remote. So there was a remote control, but there was also a dongle you had to plug into the back of each one of the units to be able to use the remote control, which honestly was a little cumbersome to be able to use if you wanted to use a remote. I didn't really like that generation at all. The second generation had a big problem with the heating units. A lot of the heating units stopped working. We had to replace them with both lighting. We actually got to the point where we just started sending new units to them because we were having so many issues with them. This is all to say, this is why I haven't filmed the video on Cold Sparks just yet is because both lighting has been struggling to get a model that was good enough 
to continually sell and not have problems other than the first gen. The first gen was great other than it got clogged, which I guess is a big problem for a lot of people. It was a pain in the ass. So third generation, they kept it the same. They just put in a different heating core, but we had that thing with the dongle and we didn't like it. And also there's some other issues, but all of this led to the fourth generation now where we have the ability for a nice long clean out session. We have two big exhaust uh, intakes on both sides with an exhaust fan on the back, intakes and the exhaust fan, keep it nice and cool. The clear out function runs great. They got an, a way higher quality heating unit in here that has had zero problems for us and all the customers that have them right now. And this port on the side allows you to manually turn that um, inner barrel to clear out any additional clogs that might be in there. So it allows for a lot better cleaning functionality. So if you do happen to get a clog, we still haven't had any on you know, any of our units, you can use this manual one to clean it out if you need to. So this is the fourth generation. Wanted to have a little backstory on that because you guys know if you've been on the channel, you'll probably see down below on the bottom of the video, both Lighting USA products. So Both Lighting USA is my company. We are the only US based dealer for both lighting. So you're buying the products from us. We actually have a better warranty than what comes with the factory. We offer a two year warranty on all of our products and anything breaks when it comes to the lights or anything along the lifespan of those two years that's not self-inflicted, like you throw the light down and it breaks. If anything malfunctions, we will 100% fix it or replace it within those two years. So if you guys are looking to pick up some cold sparks, I highly recommend you go over to our website. The link will be down below, but it's bowflightingusa.com and you guys can check out and purchase the both lighting cold sparks if you like. I highly recommend a two unit case. One caveat to mention, the powder right here is a separate purchase. Well, you can add them to the same cart, but they're separate items on the site. So the cold sparks are one thing, the powder is another. The powder right here for the cold sparks is a separate item on the website. So if you buy the cold sparks themselves, they don't come with any powder. So make sure you pick up the powder separately. We need to talk a little bit more about the powder specifically. One thing to note on the website, the machines are separate from the powder and that's because they have to be shipped differently. So if you go on the website and you wanna purchase the cold spark machines, make sure you also pick up some cold spark powder to be able to use with the machines. With that said, we need to talk about the Cold Spark powder itself, about how much you use for the events, the price, and also how safe is it. So the powder, we talked about it. It's a titanium zirconium mix, and it comes in these prepackaged sealed bags. There's two types of powder you can buy and what the difference is, is the actual granular size. So there is a indoor powder and an outdoor powder. And I will say from a safety perspective, you do not want to mix that. If you are gonna be inside, use the indoor powder. If you're gonna be outside, use the indoor or the outdoor powder. For that reason, 100% recommend to just buy indoor powder. Don't worry about the outdoor powder. I honestly, unless you really use them a lot outside, then buy the outdoor powder. But I would recommend not getting the outdoor powder at all, only buy the indoor powder. That is my recommendation. Again, this powder is completely safe from flames and everything. I'm actually gonna show you guys real quick as well. So right here is some of the powder. I just poured it out on the table. Here is a flame. Look at that. Nothing, nothing. I have to like move it around. What I'm doing is I'm causing friction when I move it around and that's what lights it up. But there you go. Completely safe to the flame. Yeah, this is gonna be burned all day long. No fire, no nothing. Well, there you have it. The powder itself is very safe. You saw from me shooting it off and showing you guys with the paper and you're putting your hand in it. It's all very safe when it comes to using at your events. It's not a big concern when it comes to safety, but when it comes to venues, perspective, legal perspective, safety is the number one priority. That's why you wanna make sure you have a class D fire extinguisher. That's why you wanna make sure you get all the legal stuff taken care of in your area and get approval, of course, from the venues before you go using them at those venues and those events. Let's talk about powder usage. How much powder do we use at events? So that way you can get a perspective. Like I mentioned, we normally only use about half a bag at each event for two cold sparks. So one of these bags can get you through easily two events, if not three, to be honest, because normally we have some left over at the end of the event. It really comes down to how long you use it for two. If you're shooting them off for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, or 30 seconds, don't go over 30 seconds. And honestly, 30 seconds is literally absurd. Normally we shoot them off one, two, three, four, five. That's about it. Five to 10 seconds is all you need for an actual shot of these things. 
Unless, you know, you got a photographer trying to frame a picture, you might need to go a little bit longer so they can get some extra shots. But for the most part, you don't shoot these off that often. We normally use them for the first dance, so that's when we first shoot them off. So we'll do introductions, we get them set up to do the first dance, and that's like the wow moment. So we'll wait until the chorus of the first dance, shoot them off, big wows, awes from the crowd, everyone applause, it's amazing. We may or may not shoot them off during the parent dances, and then normally we just wait until energetic points in the night during open dancing to shoot them off as well. We also sometimes use them for the grand exit outside. We're really not going for much powder out there because we're only shooting them off maybe like two or three times. But as you can imagine, you're not shooting them off that often. You don't really use much powder. When you purchase the powder, it comes in 10 or 20 packs. A 10 pack of this powder can easily get you through 40 events. Um, if you're using them only for exits at it, you can get them for 50 events. The powder goes a long way when it comes to the events. So that's what you need to know about the powder. So the magic question at the end of the video, how much do these cost? Let me quickly preference this is being filmed in June of 2023. Pricing may or may have not gone up since then. This is the black model. They also come in white. So for you guys that want a white model, we also have a white model. Go to bowflightingusa.com and you guys can check them out. Links down below. But a two unit road case of these is gonna run you roughly about $1,400. There are some discounts available that you guys can get to get them cheaper. And a 10 unit pack of cold spark powder is gonna run you $310. So for a two unit road case and 10 units, of powder that can get you probably about 40 events worth of use you're looking at roughly a $1,700 investment but wait there's more okay one I hate saying that but really there is more this is the first time I'm actually announcing it on the channel but we wanted to take Bowflighting USA a step further so what we did is we created some promo content for you guys. We actually have some white label reels and photos that you guys can use to help promote the products that you buy from Bowflighting USA. The cold sparks, up lights, moving heads, we got promo stuff for all of them. So we're giving you five real TikTok style white label promo videos that you can use in your marketing to promote the up lights, the cold sparks, or even the moving heads that we sell at Bowflighting USA. We're also giving you 10 photos that you can also use that are white label and you guys can use to promote the products that we are selling. I'm also giving a pricing guide. So I have a pricing guide made up that basically says how to charge accordingly for cold sparks, for up lights, for moving heads, intelligent movers, what you need to know and how fast you're gonna make your money back by charging the correct amount. I also have a rental guide that explains how you can make money renting stuff like cold sparks and up lights on days when you're not even DJing or renting them to events when you are DJing, how you get assistance, all that. I created a rental guide as well. All of that is actually for free if you spend over $1,500. So in summary, that $1,700 investment when you buy two cold sparks and 10 bags of powder to be able to use with the cold sparks gets you over that $1,500 and they'll automatically add that promo pack to your shopping cart and the pricing guide and the rental guide and you guys will be able to download all of that and use that so you can promote the cold sparks, promote the up lights before you even have them so that you can start selling them to all these clients before you even get them during the shipping process so that way you guys can quickly make your money back and make tons of money on these products. So that is the coolest thing ever that we have started. I am so happy and proud of that. That's really cool that we're giving back to you guys to help you guys make more money. Again, that promo applies to anything on the site. As long as you spend over $1,500, it'll automatically apply that promo pack. That promo pack is worth roughly $2,000. I mean, we actually made those reels in-house. We paid videographers to make them, edit them, make them awesome. All the photos are for, from professional photographers, so it's really good stuff to use. And the pricing and rental pack, I mean, that's just knowledge you can't buy. So that is all included for $1,500 with any purchase that's over $1,500. So check out Both Lighting USA if you want to learn more about that, if you want to learn more about the products, but I'm super excited about that. So anyways, this is the full video on the Cold Spark Fountains. You will also see on the website, if you go check out, there are battery packs for the Cold Spark Fountains. And we're going to be getting into that in a complete separate video because you can not only run the Cold Sparks, but you can also run your moving heads with these batteries too. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video and I will see you guys in roughly a couple weeks here for a full video on the Cold Spark moving head batteries. We always use those batteries with our exits because that way we're not running extension cords all over the place outside. Inside we normally plug them in, but these batteries are super helpful. 
especially when I told you these things take six amps of power a piece. Be on the lookout for the Cold Spark moving head batteries that we have on the website. I approve them, they're amazing. All the specs are on there, but I will be making a complete video on all the specs, all the details, everything you need to know in a future video as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, follow me on Instagram. If you guys got any questions, shoot me a DM over there. Also on Both Lighting USA, you can DM the team over there. I actually have two people in house now that help with Both Lighting USA. We, we are so thankful for how many of you guys are supporting our company and providing basically simpler, better lighting products. There's also a sound switch solution on there. I haven't even talked about that. Go check out my video on that. But these cold sparks are already in that pre-programmed sound switch file for you to fire off. Anyways, I hope you guys learned a lot about cold sparks in this video. That was the main goal was to educate you guys on all the things related to cold sparks. If you guys want to pick up some cold sparks, happy to do it. Check them out, bowflightingusa.com. They, they pass all the parameters for safety and all that good stuff. Check it out, like the video, comment down below, keep them record spinning, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.